What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Lizzie Westbrook Vibes Official YT. Um, you guys are know love wins in 2024. What goes around comes around. You spread love, you get love. So spread the love around. Uh, you guys are know Mountain Dew, Monster Energy, and Raid Shadow Legends. Please sponsor me. It's not going to happen today, but what, what, what? Correct. Hopefully someday. Now, some of you guys might not know about Raid Shadow Legends, even though they've been out for a while, and they celebrated their, what was it, 7th or 10th anniversary recently. Raid Shadow Legends is a RPG, MMO, um, pocket game that is absolutely insane it is beautiful the graphics are amazing the fighting styles are awesome it's absolutely a really good game i play it non-stop um i'm also kind of thinking about making just a raid shadow legend youtube channel um that's in the works not talking about it right now um, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that post notification bell. By the way, link is in the description to Horror Shorts Party. Um, we are reacting to a Easter horror reaction video. It's 18 minutes and 9 seconds. It is three true Easter horror stories animated. They got two... 121k views and they posted that last week um so happy easter guys um grab your snacks grab your drinks and uh yeah huge shout out to these guys i absolutely love their videos i don't usually do horror reactions anymore but you know why not for the sake of the channel I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, you guys, uh, make sure you guys drink some water. And, um, let's get into this. Oh, make sure you guys follow me on all my social medias. Tumblr. Instagram. TikTok. And Twitter. Without further ado, let's get into this. Link is in the description to the channel. Full credit to Horror Shorts Party. Go follow their socials. Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. This happened around Easter, back in the early 2000s. I was still a teen then, and didn't have a very good home life at that time. So I tried to spend as much time out of the house as possible. The problem was, I didn't live in a great part of town. So there weren't many options for after school hangouts. I usually ended up going to this one mall every day and wasting time until I finally decided to go home. There was never much to do there, but it was better than hearing my parents argue. Then one day, something happened that made me never want to go back to that mall again. It all started out completely normal. I headed over to the mall after school as usual and tried to find something to do. I had planned to hang out with a couple of my friends there, but they had all canceled on me at the last minute, so I went alone. The mall really wasn't the best place to hang out. It was really ghetto and kind of creepy looking. From the outside, it almost looked abandoned. The paint was chipping and peeling, and it was filthy all over. It would have made for a good haunted house though the inside wasn't much better either it was filled with a bunch of low lives loitering around the low-end stores that obviously weren't very well maintained i don't know how any of them stayed in business because the place didn't get much customers at all like i said just a bunch of druggies and one or two customers at best when i got there i walked around for a bit and looked in the windows of a couple of stores but i didn't go in any the place honestly seemed even more run down than usual it looked like nobody had cleaned in years. And what was even more disturbing was that I didn't see a single employee anywhere. At first, I figured they must have just made labor 
paper cuts since the mall had been losing money. But the more I walked around, the eerier it got. There appeared to be some electrical problem going on too, as the lights kept flickering weirdly, and they were completely off in some areas. It definitely didn't help make the place any less creepy. After a few more minutes of walking around, I was starting to get a little freaked out. I still hadn't seen an employee, and the mall felt like it was getting darker the further I went into it. It was easily the creepiest that it had ever been inside. I was beginning to think that I just needed to get the hell out of there. When I turned a corner and came into a concourse in the center of the mall, I saw a man dressed as a bunny sitting on a chair. The bunny looked creepy. It looked like the bunny suit was some worn out costume that the mall recycled every Easter for years. What made it even more eerie was how the lights above him began to flicker off and on. It made the whole area look pretty creepy. And it struck me as odd that there would be someone dressed as a bunny in the middle of the mall. But I guess it made sense as it was around Easter. I was just happy to see another normal person though. So I walked right over to him. The closer I got to the bunny, the scarier he looked. He was completely gone, and the suit looked ratty and old, like it had been pulled out of the garbage or something. Hey, I'm pretty glad to see you. I was beginning to think I was the only normal person here. The bunny didn't respond. He just kept sitting in the chair, not moving at all. As I got closer, I realized that there was a camera stand set up in front of him. I didn't see any cameraman though, and it didn't seem like anyone wanted to take a picture with the bunny either. I stopped a little way away and tried to talk to him again. Slow day, huh? The bunny still didn't move or say anything. It was eerie. I didn't know if the man inside the suit was asleep or if it was like an animatronic like the ones at Chuck E. Cheese. Either way, it made me really uncomfortable the way he just sat there in the chair. For some reason, I kind of wanted to take a picture with the bunny but was scared to approach him. Something just didn't feel right. Hey man, can I get a pic? The bunny still didn't say anything, even though I was standing directly in front of him. He just sat there motionless, like he was asleep or something. I finally got tired of waiting for a response, and took it upon myself to sit on the bunny's lap and take a selfie. The guy still didn't move through the whole interaction. After taking the picture, I immediately left the mall and headed home. I heard some police sirens on the way back, but I just assumed that it was due to more crime from the shitty area I lived in. I practically heard sirens every day, though as I went home, I felt again that something just wasn't right about the bunny. It was later revealed in the news that the mall bunny was found unresponsive the day before and was determined to be dead. Not only that, but the entire mall had been shut down literally a few minutes after I had left, meaning that he had to have been dead while I was there. I couldn't fully believe what I found out at first. To this day, I get scared anytime I share the story or look at that selfie. The idea that I had been so close to a dead body haunts me. This story was inspired by an incident that happened in 2018 at an Ocean County mall. An individual dressed as an Easter bunny became ill while working at the mall and was immediately taken to a hospital for treatment according to officials. The police responded to the mall around 11 a.m. Monday after receiving a report of an individual in distress. There, they found the 35-year-old Bayville woman in the bunny suit having a medical episode. Not sponsored. What's going on? I'm Aaron, and I'm trying on the Men's Feel Free Collection. It has been unclear if the woman has passed on since her time in the hospital. The mall later stated that the woman would be treated and would continue to operate their Easter Bunny operations for the remainder of Easter. of a local legend. Many residents don't believe that the Bunny Man is anything more than a myth. But tonight, it seems as though it could be truer than previously thought. A young couple walking through this overpass reported to the police that they were chased by a man with a hatchet. The man was apparently unstable, and as the legend goes, he was wearing an Easter Bunny costume. Luckily, the couple was able to get away. But as we approach Easter Sunday, authorities are urging the public to avoid passing under this bridge. As the suspect what a bunch of BS. A killer Easter bunny. Please. The news will say anything just to get some views. Ah! Oh! It's just Amanda. 
Hey, Charlie. Hey, I'm almost ready to go. I really want to come see you, but I have to make sure my parents are completely asleep first. Yeah, about that. I think you should stay in tonight. Why? Listen, I'm a little worried about you walking around on your own tonight. You know, with all the rumors going around right now. You mean the bunny man stuff? Come on, you can't be serious. That's all just a bunch of fear mongering. That story's like 50 years old. No, I'm serious. People have been going missing the last few days and Easter is tomorrow. I'm not scared of a guy in an Easter bunny costume. He's probably just some weirdo getting off of work from the mall. Uh, hey, how about this? I've got a GoPro, right? I'll strap it to my head and go by the bridge on my way and show you that it's all a bunch of stupid rumors. Are you crazy? That's a terrible idea. I think you should stay home tonight. We'll figure something else out. Nope, it's too late. My mind is already set on finding your Easter eggs. <laughs> Ew, gross. What does that even mean? 25%. That should be enough. I'll show those news nerds what real journalism is. There it is. That's the trail where the bunny man supposedly I'm, waits for I'm, his victims. Doesn't seem... I'm thinking about getting a GoPro. Uh, let me know what you guys think. That's scary. I can't remember which direction the tunnel is. It's supposed to go under the train tracks, so... Uh, that must be it. For anyone watching this video, the plan is to just walk under the bridge and go through without stopping. Just to prove that if you mind your business and don't stick around like a sitting duck, then no crazy bunny man is going to attack you. When you're alone and it's dark out, you've got to keep your head... <laughs> Jesus, where did you come from? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I'll get out of your territory. <sighs> what the hell was that about? What are you running from? It better be a freaking barrel. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, okay, I admit, I, I kind of wish I didn't decide to do this right now. Especially right before Easter. But you know what? I'm not backing down yet. It shouldn't be too much farther. Just right around this corner. There, that's the bridge. The Bunny Man Bridge. Except I don't see any Easter Bunny. I guess it must all be a... Oh my god, it's him. I can't believe what do I do now? Really? That's just great. Screw it. None of this is real. It's all just a hoax that's got me all paranoid. And now I'm seeing things. There's definitely no way there's actually some weirdo in an Easter Bunny costume waiting for me in that tunnel with a hatchet. I'm just going to walk through it and everything will be fine. No, no way, no way, no way! Ah! I really screwed up this time. I think I'm hiding in some hobo's bush toilet. Freaks! There's flies everywhere! Oh god, I should have listened to her! <laughs> was inspired by a horrific Easter Bunny urban legend regarding the Bunny Man. The legend originated from two incidents in Fairfax County, Virginia in 1970, but has been spread throughout the Washington, D.C. and Maryland areas. The legend has many variations. Most involve a man wearing a rabbit costume who attacks people with an axe or hatchet. Most of the stories occur around Colchester Overpass, a southern railway overpass spanning Colchester Road near Clifton, Virginia, sometimes referred to as the Bunny Man Bridge. Variations 
variations of the legend vary in the bunny man's name, motives, and victims, and in some accounts, victims remains being mutilated. Some believe that the bunny man's ghost is said to come out of his place of death each year on Easter or Halloween to commemorate his passing. This happened around the Easter of 2001, when I used to live with my family. I grew up in a pretty wealthy household. The house consisted of my parents, my sister, and I. We lived in a mansion located somewhere in Fresno, California. My parents were millionaires, which meant my sister and I got pretty much whatever we wanted. Our parents were always too busy to spend much time with us, so they would just buy us anything that we asked for to make up for it. Then, one day, everything changed. When I turned 21, my parents suddenly decided that they didn't want to keep spoiling me. They told me that it wasn't fair to me to make me think that I could have whatever I wanted all the time. It all seemed like a load of shit to me, but they really committed to it. They kept going with it, and they started doing the same with my sister as well. Not only did they continue to try and teach us responsibility, but they also decided to set our inheritance so that we wouldn't receive it until we turned 35. According to them, it would make us better people if we learned to provide for ourselves for a few years before we got any money from them. And that's when I started going batshit crazy. You pieces of dog shit! Y'all wanna ruin my Easter? Ruin my sleeping schedule? Ruin my entire life when you can just direct deposit me a small allowance? I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! What made things worse was that my sister didn't even seem to mind. She said she actually understood what my parents were trying to do and that she supported their decision. She didn't want to rely on them for everything. She wanted to go out into the world and work for herself. Again, I just couldn't wrap my head around why someone would worry about working when they knew they stood to inherit millions of dollars later on. I tried to get my sister to see my side, but she wouldn't listen. Whenever I tried convincing her, she would just ignore me and say that I needed to grow up. That's what really annoyed me. My parents and sister thought they were so much smarter and more understanding than I was. And it was so frustrating. I tried to tell myself to just get over it, that I just had to live with my parents' decision. Still, 35 years old was a long way off. Then, one day, around Easter, everything changed. I had decided to spend Easter weekend with my girlfriend and her family. I remember being away from home for several days. It was a really nice time, and I enjoyed having a break from my family for a while. But eventually, I knew I would have to head home. Hello, I'm home. I arrived at home around 8 p.m. and was surprised to find that the house was gloomy and dark. There was no way that my family would have gone to sleep yet, so it was really weird to find the house so quiet. I thought at first that they had all gone out, but then I saw my parents' car in the driveway. It was bizarre. I started to get a really uneasy feeling. It didn't make much sense. As I walked toward the kitchen area, all the lights were off inside. I couldn't see anything at first. Hello? Mom? Dad? Lisa? The house was eerie. I just stood there in pitch darkness. But what made things more eerie was how there were an unusual amount of flies hovering around the kitchen. An insane thought suddenly came to me and I started to panic. I slowly reached my hand for the light switch on the wall, trying to find it in the dark. And when I was finally able to grasp the switch, I flipped it on. And that's when I saw the most disturbing, most horrific sight I have ever laid eyes on. There on the kitchen floor was my family lying motionless. Ah! Ah! Somebody help me! Ah! My entire family was gone, right there in front of me. For a second, I thought I would actually faint in sheer terror. Thank you for I staggered boring. backwards for a moment, but I managed to stay on my feet and pull out my phone. I frantically dialed 911. 911, what's your emergency? Please, you have to help me. My family is on the ground. I think they're. Oh my god. Oh god. Ugh. 
completely lost it and started sobbing uncontrollably. I just couldn't handle what was going on. The cops came shortly after that, but there was nothing they could do. It was already too late. They took the remains away and then brought me down to the station for questioning. They asked me if I knew anything about what happened to my family, but I couldn't say anything. The words just wouldn't come out. I was still in too much shock. But after further investigation, they had found out that I hired a hitman. I had promised him a portion of my inheritance if my family was taken out. I just couldn't wait until I was 35 to get the money. I was arrested and charged soon after, along with the hitman and his accomplices. We were all convicted to life in prison without parole. As I spend the rest of my life in prison, I keep coming back to one thing. It was all for nothing, and I'll forever hate Easter. This story was inspired by a horrific Easter incident revolving around a 21-year-old rich kid named Dana Yule, who learned that he would not receive his $7.9 million inheritance until he was 35 years old. He then set a devious plan in motion to expedite the process. Yule, who had been living with his millionaire parents as well as his sister Tiffany, derived a plot to take out his family. The plan took place on an Easter Sunday. The bodies of Dale, Glee, and Tiffany Yule were discovered in their ranch home in Fresno, California. The crime scene evidence suggested a hitman for hire scheme, and authorities quickly focused their investigation on their surviving son, Dane, who at the time was away with his girlfriend and her parents. Authorities were able to connect him to the crime. Dana Yule and his two accomplices were all sentenced to life without parole. Thank you so much for for watching. Huge shout out to Horror Shorts Party. Uh, go check out their merch. Uh, go support them. Go subscribe to them. Link is in the description. Full credit goes to them. Yada, yada, yada. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe on my channel. Let's go for 10 likes on this video. Um... Love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Link is in the, link is in the description as well.